once again I want to make a video but I have basically no audio wait a second I have no video <laughs> to show you so this is an old like 15 minute clip of me driving the Super Duty that I used to own and it doesn't really serve a purpose but it's just you know to have some video for this talking video anyway um i want to talk about nothing that has to do with this video uh but <laughs> t-mobile and um you know recently i i did a video about comparing t-mobile to at&t and just kind of you know learning more about the company so i wanted to take 15 minutes or so <laughs> and talk to you about um you know, T-Mobile and, and how we got to where we are and, and what led up to everything. And so, yeah, um, I used to have T-Mobile years ago. Um, we, we had it for all of a week and it was just horrible. <laughs> um, you couldn't make a phone call without it dropping. You couldn't do anything. It was just bad. So um, we dropped it and we never went back. Well, recently they started building a new store next to verizon wireless and um we didn't really know what it was what it was going to be you know we've had at&t retail stores not corporate but retail stores here in in our city we have our verizon corporate uh and i think we have a cricket now i'm not real sure i should actually check into that anyway um but we seen a new store going up next to verizon we weren't real sure what it was going to be but it kind of looked like a mobile carrier and then it was finally announced that it's going to be a T-Mobile corporate store. Now, you guys know me. I'm into sailor stuff. I'm into these sort of things. You know, it's just what I do. Um, so I thought this would be a perfect job opportunity for me. Um, you know, I'm not really looking to leave Enterprise. I like my job with Enterprise. But, I mean, if the pay were right and the job were good, I could see myself going to T-Mobile. So... I applied and um, I got an email back a couple of days later just saying, you know, oh, we went a different direction. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, basically just saying the position had been filled and I was not chosen. And I, it, whatever, you know, it's not like I really expected to get the job. I'm really happy where I'm at. So it didn't matter to me. Well, fast forward about two weeks and I get a call from a random number asking me to come in for an interview for T Mobile. And I'm thinking, well, I got an email saying that they already filled the position. So, like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, um, you know, I've been I've been looking into T-Mobile, and I've been wanting to give them a try. I was, you know, like, thinking about how could I get a line to test them out. Because that's the thing. I can sell you anything. I'm really good about being a salesperson. But I have to stand behind what I'm selling or I'm not a very good salesperson. <laughs> um, because, you know, I'm honest. I'm honest with everybody. And um, I, I don't... No amount of money is going to change my opinion on something. And if I feel strongly about something, I'm going to tell you my opinion. I'm not going to sit here and try to sell you something that I hate and would not use myself. So that's kind of where I was at. I wanted to get a T-Mobile line and see... If I liked it, would it even be reasonable to use? Uh, because I'm not going to stand here and sell it knowing that it's a pile of crap. You know, I don't, I don't want my reputation on the line because, you know, I lock someone into a two-year contract and then they come back and say, I can't make phone calls, it drops all the time, you know, that sort of thing. Now, I know that we used to have pretty decent Sprint coverage here, and I know that T-Mobile bought Sprint. So there were some, you know, possibilities that T-Mobile coverage wouldn't be so bad. So I wanted to get a line. Well, just so happened at the same time, my dad was wanting to drop Verizon. He was talking about how bad Verizon is and how, you know, they're just always jacking the price up. I mean, he paid 300 a month for three lines. It just wasn't any, it didn't make any sense. Um, so, you know, I was, I tried to go over his Verizon account and say like, you know, we could change your plan. We could do this. We could make things a little cheaper, but I mean, ultimately, um, it wasn't cheap enough for him to want to stay. So, um, he's like, who would you go to? And I'm like, well, um, you know, at and pretty good. <clears throat> I have at and but I've never tried T-Mobile and I would really like to know, you know, how they stack up. So, um, 
I told him, you know, like their, their deals are good from the pricing standpoint. It looks really good. So we might could try it. So I take him in to T-Mobile and we get him set up. They have a, a 55 plus plan, which is pretty cool because you get a discount for being 55 or older. And um, got his account set up. And then uh, they were doing like an iPhone on us program where you trade in your old iPhone. They'll give you a new one for free. And I was like, well... I've got a spare iPhone 11 that I barely use. Let me trade it in and get the fr a free phone, you know, and uh, and that allows me to test T-Mobile. So he agreed, and um, and so that's what we did. So obviously the free phone is like an iPhone 15, not Pro, not anything, and I did the 15 Pro Max, so. There's a little bit of a payment on that, but that's a different story. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> anyway, um, it was a perfect opportunity for me to try T-Mobile and see what I thought about it and, you know, kind of go from there. So, um, while I was there helping him get set up, I was talking to a lady that, you know, obviously works there and told her that, you know, I had, I had some decent interest in the position, but... I had received an email saying the position was filled, but then I got a call for an interview and I just wasn't real sure the mixed signals, you know, I thought, well, maybe it was a mistake or I don't know, who knows. Um, I did try to call the guy back and he wouldn't call me back. So I was like, you know, maybe it was a mistake. So she was telling me like, no, there's actually an opening still and um, I, I'll put your name, I'll give you a good word to him and, and try to get him to call you back and, you know, you should really go through with it. She's telling me about all the, you know, incentives and benefits and things for employees and I'm just like, well, you know, I could try it, I guess. So anyway, fast forward. Um, after I talked to her and she talked to him and, you know, whatever, I learned that, um, the position, there was an open position and I was like, oh, okay, this, you know, whatever. sounds great. Um, couldn't get the guy to call me back. Not at all. <laughs> um, I've called, I've texted, I've done every means of contact that I know how to contact him. He won't call me back. He won't text me back. Nothing. Well, um, I just kind of hung it up. I was like, yeah, it's whatever. You know, if he doesn't, he doesn't want me or whatever, whatever the case may be, that's fine. Um, so I went on about my business <laughs> and I run several Facebook groups, uh, local Facebook groups. Um, it's just something I like to do. I, I like to help out, um, when admins, you know, kind of get tired or bored or whatever, and they can't do it anymore. Um, Usually they come to me and say, hey, do you want to take this group over? Sure, I can do it. Um, so I, I run several groups, probably upwards of 20 at this point. Um, and I noticed on some of my groups, someone else from T-Mobile was posting about the new location opening up soon and that they were hiring for it. And I was like, well, son of a bee. <laughs> so I contact this guy and I'm like, look, I've, I've tried to get a hold of the hiring guy. I've called, I've texted, he doesn't can't he doesn't call, he won't return my calls, he won't return my texts. Like I assume the position was filled and yet here you are posting about a position. <laughs> so he's like, "Well, let me look. I'll find out." So anyway, the new store um has been filled. The position was actually filled. That's why he wouldn't call me back. Um, it seems kind of counterintuitive. I don't know why he wouldn't just call me back and say, Hey, the position has been filled. Thanks. Anyway, you know, let me know something, a text message. Cause it took five seconds, nothing. Um, but anyway, this guy, he's like, Hey, do you have five minutes to jump on a call with me? And I'm like, sure. You know, like what's, what's the worst that could happen? Um, so I talked to him. Uh, we actually talked for about 20 minutes and just kind of give him an idea of my background. You know, I, I, got several years of sales experience I, I pretty well know what I'm doing and I've got several years of cellular telephone experience so I know pretty well about what I'm doing there too um, I, I, I'm pretty well qualified for the job I would say um, so he's like hey you know that store is full but I've got another store over in Asheville that perhaps I can get you an interview with and I'm like yeah sure why not 
Um, so he gives me like the rundown of the company and how things work. And I'm going to touch on some key things that he told me. Basically, um, one was, you know, yes, we work on commission basis and sales. That's, that's what we're doing is trying to make sales. But, um, at the same time, it's not about, you know, uh, just trying to sell any and all things to everyone. You know, we want to, we do a thing called future fitting and right fitting. And you want to make sure that you're future fitting someone, you're not selling them, you know, a phone that might be obsolete in a couple of days because it's, you know, 20 years old. But you also want to right fit them and make sure that they're getting what they want. Because if, you know, a week later they come back and say, this is not what I want. You talk me into it and I hate it. That actually comes back on you. As well as things like, you know, if they don't want protection and you add it anyway and then they remove it, that will come back on you because, you know, that that's not what they wanted. Clearly, if they removed it within 90 days and you talked them into it, so clearly, you know, you weren't doing your job. He was just trying to make a sale. All this makes a lot of sense to me, and that's exactly how he explained it to me. You know, obviously we work on sales, but we're not trying to force things down your throat because uh, nobody, you, nobody wins like that. And that's, you know, I basically told him that like, you know, yes, I can sell anything I want. Like, that's not a problem, but I'm not going to sit here and push something that I don't support. I'm not going to sit here and push something that I feel like would be the wrong thing. So like all this seems to be really good to me. Like, you know, um, a company that's not going to wrap me up and fire me for not meeting a sales quota, but also allow me to, you know, make a commission based on my sales um, and do how I want to do it. So everything sounded great. He even said that, you know, you get to, uh, incentives uh like all the benefits and everything even if you're part-time don't even have to be full-time and i explained to him that i work at enterprise two days a week and i uh don't want to quit enterprise so my goal would be to find a part-time position that would work with my schedule for now and i told him you know if if in the future i decide that i really like the job and like the environment and everything about it I would strongly consider leaving Enterprise and um, going T-Mobile full time, uh, especially if the money were right, because they were promising twenty dollars an hour. But I later learned that's not at all what they promised. So um, anyway, he schedules the interview with the Asheville location, and I go to the interview. I meet the the hiring manager there, and I talk to him a little bit. And honestly, um, he gave me the complete opposite impression of the company than um, the original guy had done. Uh, basically, it was, you know, we need to make a sale at all costs, no matter what. Uh, even if it's not right for the customer, we have to sell, we have to, you know, do this, do that. And it's like, okay, well, that does not fit what the other guy told me. And then um, we go through this, this long, drawn-out, 20-minute interview, and we're kind of just chatting about the company and how things work, and I'm just trying to get an idea of what to expect. And um, he comes back with, at the very end of the interview, um, that even though it's a part-time position, he would need open availability before he could hire me on permanently, meaning I would need to leave Enterprise. Um, they have a training period, which is supposed to last three weeks. He said that it would last four and, um, the training period, you're paid 15 an hour with no commission. And he said, after the four week training, you would go through a role play scenario where you would, um, I guess, pitch a sale to them and see if they think you're good enough. And if they don't think you're good enough, then you have to go through an additional two months of training at 15 an hour. Uh, if they do think you're good enough, then they make you what they call commissionable, where you're able to earn a commission. Um, but then he said he would not make me commissionable until I left Enterprise, which I'm like, well, that's not at all what we talked about. And you've wasted 20 minutes of my time because I'm not leaving Enterprise. That's not going to happen. So, um annoyed annoyed with it you know and i wrote a message to the guy i think he's the regional manager like i said earlier um just 
letting him know like, yeah, thanks for, you know, talking to me about it and setting up the interview with this guy. But clearly he works on a different set of rules than what you said the company works on. And I mean, maybe this is a one-off and it's just him poorly running the place, or maybe the whole company runs this way and it was all a lie. I don't know. Uh, but I just told him like, I'm not going to go work for that location and that guy. Um, if a position opened up at the original store here next to my house, then absolutely, I would love to try it, but otherwise, no thanks. He read the message and did not reply. And um, I just thought that was funny because it, it shows that either one, he's actually looking into it and maybe he'll get back to me, but I doubt it. Uh, but more likely than not, two, it shows that he doesn't give a crap either. Um, so... Maybe it's best I don't work for T-Mobile, you know? Um, I'm I'm happy at Enterprise. I only work two days a week. I could have more time if I wanted, but I don't really want more time. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. Um, I, was, I wanted to try something different. You know, the, the possibilities at T-Mobile seemed pretty endless to me. Um, it's based on, you know, your device sales. You don't make a whole lot off of a device. But if you can get someone to change their plan or add a new line or upgrade their plan or if they're just coming in to set up a new account, that's where the money is because you're paid half of whatever their monthly cost is for the first month as your commission for getting them set up. So like if you buy a $100 a month plan, well, I just made 50 bucks off of that. <laughs> that seemed like a pretty good deal to me, a pretty good setup. Um, so I was excited to, to try that and, but, you know, also get people set up right. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to pack their account with every possible feature just so I make a dollar because, you know, if they remove it within 30 or 90 days anyway, I don't make a dollar, but you know, I felt like, and, and knowing where I come from with my internet sales, I felt like I could have 15, 20 people sign up my first month there that would have been a pretty good check because, you know, you got their home internet at $50 a month. I make 25 for the first month, um, 25 times, you know, 20 people. That's, that's pretty good. I could be happy with that. Ultimately, I wanted to try it for 90 days. And that's what I told the regional manager. I wanted to try it for 90 days and see, um, could I make $20 an hour or more? Um, you know, I already make like 1750 at, at enterprise and, um, going to 15 would be a, a downgrade for me. So I would need to make good commission to make it worth it. Otherwise it wouldn't be worth it. Um, and, and he was totally on board. He said, you know, years ago he applied for enterprise and, um, he asked them for an opportunity to think about it. And they thought he was crazy <laughs> and they did not give him the job because of that. Um, and so he totally understood where I was coming from on that, on that, and, um, and was willing to work with me on, you know, give me three months, I'll do the job, I'll learn the job, I'll go through the training, but let me actually do the job and see if I want to leave Enterprise. And ultimately, I don't think I would have. Um, knowing what I know now, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> That's usually how it always works out. I, I once applied for Verizon, um, and it was kind of the same deal. Um, I was fed this, this BS line of, you know, oh, we got to do the right thing. And then when I go to the interview, oh, it's sell, 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 you know, um, in the shadowing that I did on that day <laughs> for employees that were working there, it was, I was pretty much told that everything needs to be a sale no matter what. So they had an old lady come in there and said that her phone doesn't hold a charge anymore and wanted to know if they had batteries. Now, me being me, customer service oriented, I would have said, hey, you can get this battery on Amazon for five bucks. Sure, I don't make a sell out of it, but I helped a customer. And I feel like that relationship with, you know, a customer, a random person, whoever, will come back to help me later on. Whereas if I had just sold, you know, wrote her off and said, no, you got to buy a new phone. Like, had she found out the truth, she'd have been pissed off at me. That made total sense. It made so much sense to just help the customer and do the right thing. But in that interaction, they told her, oh, they don't make this phone anymore. They don't have batteries for it. You'll, you'll need a new phone to your contract. At the time, it was to your contracts. 
Um, and I, I was just appalled. I was like, you could have helped this lady. Sure. It wouldn't have made you any money, but what does it matter? You know, like I, I, I think she ended up not buying anyway. So you wasted 45 minutes trying to convince her to buy and she didn't buy when you could have just spent five minutes telling her, Hey, they have these batteries on Amazon for five bucks. Okay. Thanks. And she leaves. Then you can move on to the next customer and actually make a sale. But no, you wanted to try to wrong the customer that was there in the first place and didn't make the sale after all. So anyway, um, before I go too far into this, um, that was what was up with T-Mobile. I'm not taking a job with T-Mobile at this point. Um, I would like to try it, but I mean, if the, all the locations have the same set of rules as the one that I interviewed with, then I don't think I want to try it because, um, why is it that all of these commission based jobs are so shady? Why, why is that? You know, like you, you hear of car salesmen that are just like, Oh God, a car salesman. I don't want to deal with them. I mean, it's basically the rejected car salesmen that work at cell phone companies and they do the same crap. It, none of it is to help the customer. None of it is customer service oriented. It's all about make that money, sell, sell, sell. I, I honestly would love to start up my own like authorized retailer of say the three major brands of cell phone companies and just provide actual customer service, help people with things they actually need help with rather than just sell, sell, sell. I, I think that that business model could have the most customers because people are going to go back to a place like that. They're happy to spend their money with a place like that rather than just someone who tried to force them into whatever because they wanted to make that check. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> That's what was up with me testing T-Mobile and I didn't end up taking the job. So 